In this video, we are going to build a logistic regression model that will predict whether the stock price will move uh, up or down. So basically what we are going to do here is build a model, uh, build a predictive model that will uh, sort of uh, predict whether the stock price will move up or move down. So the it's a stock price movement uh, model. I'll take the ISLR data. Um, so let me first run the library and let's see what's there in the data. Uh, so the library is ISLR, the data is uh, uh, S market. Okay, So this is a capital market data. So that's why it's called uh, S market, stock market. Um, okay, so we've got the year and then the lag, the different lag, there are five lags for the stock price. So what do you mean by lag? Lag is nothing but, uh, you know, the price of stock for the previous periods. So the lag of stock price for today's price is just uh, the uh, yesterday's price. That's the first lag. Day before yesterday's price is the second lag. And then two days before uh, today is the third lag. So that's the way we calculate the lag of stock price. Uh, direction has the data for uh, the data, uh, the stock price going up or down. And that's important because that's what we are trying to predict. So that's going to be the target variable for us. We've also got volume that will you know, give us what is the volume of the trade that has happened. All right, with this data in mind, so let's start building the model. Uh, before that, let's see uh, or let's understand the data a little more. What's the dimension of the data? We have got uh, 1250 observations um, and nine variables in place. Uh, let's first see how the data looks like. So this is the data. We have got the different lags and then volume data and we have got the direction up or down. So that's going to be the target variable for us. And it goes to value. So it's a binary uh, data. Uh, the, the target variable is binary in nature. It has got only two values. So we'll use logistic regression uh, to, uh, to predict whether it's going to go up uh, or not. Okay, so the idea is to find the probability of uh, the stock price going up. Okay, <clears throat> so let's first uh, do the summary of of the uh, of the data. Uh, now, uh, finding out the descriptive statistic is very important, and it's important any any model building process is the primary thing. Uh, it gives us an understanding how the data is distributed. Um, and that's what it is. Um, so we'll also see the correlation of data. Okay, um, as expected, uh, the correlation of uh, the stock price is, you know, sort of correlated with the uh, lags, its respective lags, and that's expected because Stock price of today is correlated with stock price of yesterday and stock price of day before yesterday, uh, right? So that's what we are also, uh, you know, uh, experiencing here. So that's quite obvious. Um, so once we have certain amount of understanding of uh, how the data is, uh, we know what is our target variable and what are our explanatory variable. Um, then we'll straight away go with uh, modeling. Okay. Now uh, I'm not taking the training and test data as to I'm not doing a sampling uh, of you know dividing the data set into training and you know validation or holdout sample and then building model. We'll see what problem that one would face if you do not go ahead with that kind of uh, you know sampling. Okay. And that way you will understand why sampling is so important, why it is good to you know build a model with one sample, uh, with one set of data points and then test your model with the holdout sample. So we will do with the full data set and we will see what exactly is the problem that you might face if you just use the uh, you know the full data uh, in order to build the model. So we will use uh, the uh, GLM function which is the generalized linear model and logistic regression is, is part of the generalized linear model hence we will use the GLM. Um, the syntax uh, is pretty much same that you might have uh, seen in logistic regression or in uh, you know linear regression. Uh, we have got the target variable in the left hand side 
Um, and in the right hand side, we have got the explanatory variables. So we have used the five lag prices of the stock price and then the volume. And the data that we have used is uh, S market, the, the data that we just saw. Remember, uh, so just one thing you remember here, we have not divided the data into uh, training and test sample. We'll do that later and we'll just see if you don't do that, what's the outcome. Uh, and the family of the model that you are using is binomial here. Remember, it's a binomial model because it has got the target variable has got only two values. Okay, so that's important. So you need to uh, mention what the class or the family of model that you are fitting out from the generalized linear model. So let's run this. Um, so I've run this. Now the results are uh, you know stored uh, in the variable fit. And let's uh, do the summary of that. So when we uh, see the summary of this variable, we've got, uh, so normally whatever you get in a logistic regression, you get that uh, in your summary statistics. You have got the intercept and the slope coefficients. Okay, so these are the uh, you know, details for slope coefficients. So look at the estimate. Okay, and that's very important because that gives you the intercept and slope coefficient. So the intercept is minus uh, 0 0.126. The uh, slope coefficients are minus uh, 0 0.07, minus 0 0.04 for lag 2, minus 0 uh, sorry, 0 0.01 for lag 3, and so on. So looking at the uh, you know estimates, we can uh, you know understand sort of the relationship between the movement of stock price with respect to the uh, with respect to the uh, the lag variables and the volume, okay, a negative relationship actually talks about sort of a negative uh, impact, and the positive uh, the if the estimate is positive, then it has is a positive impact on the um, on on your target variables, okay. Uh, one thing that is also important is looking at the uh, p value uh, because that gives you uh, you know the sort of a confidence about your uh, your significance of variables so what we'll do is that we'll just take the coefficients from the uh, only only the coefficients okay so we have got these coefficients so these are the coefficients now we can take these coefficients to an excel sheet and you know use this coefficient in a uh, logistic regression equation i'm sure you are familiar with uh, logistic regression equation Use that equation and find the probability that the stock will move up. Okay, um, uh, so the price will move up. That's you can actually always uh, get it done manually, but we can you know do it uh, you know directly. We don't have to you know take this uh, estimates values and do it manually. Uh, by just using the equation, we can directly predict uh, the probability using using this model okay so how we'll do that we'll use the predict function to be able to uh, do so uh, and we'll store the probability values in what is known as the prob we'll just define a variable prob and you can give any name to it so i've just given prob uh, and the function predict uh, will take uh, the coefficients from uh, the model that we just built uh, a, 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 just build now and then the type is uh, a response okay so it is going to uh, you know what is going to predict is uh, is 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 nothing but the um, the target variable along with the probability so we all will get in the prob is the target variable ups and down and their respective probability okay fine now let's run this so we'll run this and then let's see what exactly uh, do we have in this uh, particular variable. So we'll just print the first 20 uh, observations and let's see what are there. So now we can see we have got the probabilities uh, for respective observations. Now you will get that for entire set of training data. Now remember one thing we are doing this uh, prediction only on the training data. So we have just used the same data for building model and we are also predicting the probability with the same data ideally that should not be done but for demonstration i mean for illustration purpose i'm just doing it and i'll show you what exactly is the problem and we'll come to uh, know that so now we have for each observation we have got 
the respective probability of that happening okay um so in order to see whether you know our predictive model is doing a good job or not we'll uh, use some matrix in order to evaluate uh, the performance of this model so some of the commonly used matrix are uh, confusion matrix and the accuracy ratio okay so we'll we can uh, you know easily get a confusion matrix so how do we get that so we use um, we just you know uh, create a uh, a matrix with uh, 1250 observations so that's uh, is nothing but uh, the total number of observ observation in our in our data set you know we just create that with the value up and if the probability value in the predict uh, matrix uh, in this in this vector is less than or equal to 0.5 then we just uh, you know assign it to be down otherwise it is up because it's already there in up when we define itself and every time it is less than 0.5 we call it down right and how is that and why do, why do we do that because the threshold point that we can take in order for us to classify the data into ups and down is 0.5 it could differ actually it depends on uh, the situation we are dealing with some you know uh, specific problems demands a different threshold value but mostly we use 0.5 as the threshold so any probability of Point, greater than 0.5 uh, is considered to be uh, stock price moving up uh, and uh, probability less than or equal to 0.5 we just consider that as pro, uh, stock price moving down and that's exactly what we have done here okay so let's run this now let's tabulate uh, the predicted value and the actual value now, our actual values for market up and down for the data that we have used for this 1250 observation we have that in the data itself so s market has the uh, variable direction and that has got the actual data and spread that we just defined above will have the um, the predicted values right ups and uh, down so let's sample it and let's see uh, what is the correct uh, prediction and what is the wrong prediction when you uh, you know run this now you can see here okay so one second so this is uh, prayed so this is uh, you know the the vertical one uh, is the bread and the horizontal one is uh, the actual data okay so this is actual data here it should be actual and here it's predicted so now don't confuse with that uh, so uh, in the column sector we have the uh, actual and in the uh, in the rows we have got the uh, predicted so uh, actual down and predicted down we have got 145 observation like that actual up and predicted up is 5 507 so we've got correct correct prediction of 145 plus 507 that's correct prediction and the, so this that's the diagonal matrix the off diagonal matrix off diagonal numbers 141 which is like the actual is one uh, actual is up and the predict uh, trade is down so we've got 141 and the actual is down and the predicted is up it is 457 now we can see that you know the prediction is uh, somewhat okay but not that great because we have got a lot of wrong predictions right so how do we get to know what percentage of data is correctly predicted and what percentage of data is not correctly predicted and you can easily get that right so how do you get that we have got the you know the, uh, the predicted data and we have got the actual data right from the data set so just take the cases where they are matching if up is uh, they are in actual and up is there in the uh, in the uh, predicted they are matching okay and that's uh, one sort of one pair of matching pair if both are down that's also a matching pair if up is down and down is up that's not a matching pair so let's take the average of all the cases where it is matching with the actual is matching with the predicted so if that uh, is done we just 
find it to be 52 percent okay which is not very great it's just slightly better than the random prediction the logistic regression ideally should give better uh, however we have just got uh, 52 percent correct prediction which is slightly better than a random prediction so randomly if you just toss a coin and you know predict whether it's going to go up or go down you will get 50 percent times correctly okay and 52 percent is just slightly better than that however uh, the problem is that you can't trust uh, this uh, confusion matrix or the accuracy test why so because we have taken the data that we have used for model building purpose so we have taken the same data for building model and use that same data for validating it and that's the wrong way of doing it okay uh, the reason is very simple because if, if you uh, you know use the same data for validate, validation purpose uh, it is most likely uh, underestimate the error or underestimate the misclassification so that's one uh, you know thing you should uh, know very uh, very well that if you use the same data the uh, misclassification is always underestimates underestimated hence it's always good to go with uh, you know two sets of data which is completely disjoint that means they are totally different no single observation is common in training and test data will the model in train the training data and test it in the test data so what we'll do is that we'll create two samples training and test samples so we've got the training data here uh, so uh, data which is less than or before 2005 we just take that as a training sample and we'll build that model and we'll test the model in the data 2005 so this is you know uh, technically this is called out time validations where you know your training data comes from a different year and the test data comes from a totally different year so the training data is from 2001 to 2004 and the test data is of one year data which is 2005 so we created a training sample so it's simple to create and then we uh, get a test sample based on this okay and then let's see uh, the dimension of the test sample um, so we have got 252 observations which belong to the year 2005 and that happens to be the test sample for us now we'll fit uh, the training data the model to the training data um, so the syntax remains same we'll use the same alg algorithms from uh, by using the function glm um, and we'll use the same data s market except the fact that we'll subset it only to train okay so we'll subset it to train now that's important to remember because when you're using subsetting it will take only that subset of data that means it is going to take only data from 2001 to 2004 the 2005 is going to be excluded from the data set okay because that will be kept for holdout uh, purpose so let's run this model so run this now let's do the prediction now remember last time around we had done the prediction on the same data on the full set of data but now since we have divided the time to two groups training and testing data will use the test data to do the prediction because what matters to us is the error rate or the misclassification error in the test data not on the training data because test data is not part of the training data and test data is totally different now the idea is or the intuition behind uh, this uh, you know way of classifying data into two groups is because your model should perform well in completely new data or completely new observations something that has not been realized or not been seen okay and given that we actually do not know about the future we just consider that you know we just you know take a subset of the full data and consider that or uh, assume that data to be completely new and do the prediction on that data and see if the model is working fine or not so here is uh, you know when we uh, do the predictions let's see what is the percentage of uh, correct prediction so we'll use the same way the way we uh, you know did last time around to uh, to you know get the confusion and accuracy confusion matrix and the accuracy uh, ratio but this time we'll do the uh, confusion matrix with the test data not with the training data remember this thing okay we have got the test data 
not the training data, not the um, training data or even the full data. Last time around we had done it with the full data, I remember. Now this time we have got um, different results. So let's see what exactly is the accuracy. So uh, 44 times uh, both prediction, predicted and actual are up. 77 times uh, the predicted and actual are down. So let's see what exactly is the accuracy. So accuracy is nothing but the correct prediction divided by the total number of observations. Total number of observations is 252 and the uh, correct prediction is 44 plus 77 and that comes out to be 48 percent. Now 48 percent is very bad isn't it because it is doing worse than what one would be getting by simply tossing a coin. So with just random guess you will you will uh, get a success rate of 50 percent whereas with this model in place uh, it is doing nothing uh, better it's just doing worse than what you will get uh, in random prediction so that's one bad thing about using the full data um, you know building for model okay so it's important to, to uh, use a test data and do the uh, you know validation of your model in order to be sure that your model is performing well uh, what is the conclusion from here is the model doing well or not the conclusion is no it is doing very bad okay the existing or the current model that we have with us is doing very bad job because it's predicting only 48 percent of uh, you know data correctly and rest it is doing uh, uh, a misclassification or a wrong prediction but we can improve on this model we need not have to use the same model that we have you know built so far we can do a twist to this model we can just you know do a bit of fine tuning with this model and we can get a better model. So one of the way of you know um, improving the performance of a model a predicted uh, predictive model is that look at your uh, explanatory variables or the features we have got five black variables and one variable called volume. Now most of these variables are not doing well if you look at the results from the summary statistic that I showed to you many of these lag variables are not very significant enough or they are not contributing towards the prediction of this model. Now this might be a problem that it is actually helping or rather uh, you know um, helping adversely or it is adversely impacting the predictive uh, ability of this model. Okay, So let's get rid of the unwanted or variables that are not so important for the model. So looking at the variables that we have seen in the summary statistic, uh, there are three lag variables and volume are not helping much. They are simply creating more problems. So the high prediction error rate that we have seen last time is probably, and we are not sure yet, probably because of this uh, not so important variables. These variables may be contributing towards the high uh, you know, prediction error. So let's remove them. So the more two most important variables are lag one and lag two. So and intuitively also that makes sense because stock price movement depends it doesn't depend much on uh, you know uh, the higher lags. Okay, uh, today's stock price uh, or tomorrow's stock price will depend on today's stock price and day before today's stock price, not five days ago, right? What the stock price was five days ago, you know. So that's intuitive as well. So let's go ahead and build the model with just two explanatory variables, lag one and lag two. And let's see if the model is improving. Okay. Now we'll you know calculate uh, the probabilities for the test data. So we'll do it for test data because that's what mattered to us. And now uh, with the new model in place, the model we hope to you know. Uh, produce better result. Let's do the uh, confusion matrix for this. Okay, so we just r run the uh, tabulated form for the predicted value and the actual data from the test data. Okay, and remember we are doing the validation or you know we are, we are creating the uh, this confusion matrix on the uh, test data. That's important to remember. Do not do that with the uh, training data. Okay. So we just use the training data for building the model. Okay, so I'm just repeating the same thing over again because many people commit this mistake 
they use the trained data for building model and use the same data for validation purpose and they are happy about the fact that they are getting a good result which is not to be the case because that should not give you the confidence only when you are your test data is uh, you know doing uh, or the model performing very well on the test data you should be rest assured otherwise not so let's tabulate it and when we tabulate it we got uh, 106 good predict, uh, correct prediction for uh, up moving up uh, both actual and predicted and 35 cases where you know both are move, uh, moving down so let's see what is the correct prediction 106 plus 35 and the total number of observations is 252 okay, in the test data so the accuracy is 55.9% uh, or almost 56% now remember we started uh, with 52% and it came down to 48% now it has 56% so the model has improved drastically by eliminating some of the unwanted variables explanatory variables okay now this model can be used to sort of predict uh, if the stock price will move up or down based on uh, the given probability from the uh, from this model um, so uh, this is of course not the final model you can improve on this you can use more variables you can use the uh, power uh, you know you can use the square of this lag you can take logarithmic you can you know use a lot of transformed variables and let's see uh, whether the uh, the the accuracy ratio is actually improving uh, by including uh, you know these transformed variables okay so try out and i give it leave it to you just just try with lag square of the lag square square of lag 2 and take the logarithm the exponential value and any sorts of mathematical transformation you can do with these variables take the uh, inter uh, the uh, what do you call it as uh, you know this multiply lag 1 and lag 2 um, so just uh, do the experiments uh, yourself and see whether uh, the accuracy ratio is improving uh, or not it could actually go down sometimes but uh, you know we just hope that it actually improves so just try it out and uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe to our channel thanks